Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Reflections on the Glorious Quran, a program in which I am trying to understand the meanings of the Quran. I'd like you to also understand the message of this great book. The Quran is actually the Hidayah and it is also Shifa'un Lima Fisudur, a healing for the sicknesses of the heart, really. It is a book that is really cures the illnesses of our heart. You know, before I touch the topic that I want to talk about today, I want to just clarify what we mean by Shifa. Shifa is healing. You know, often when we are ill, we go to the doctor and the doctor prescribes us some medicine. You know, if we have a, an infection, flu and colds are very common in our country here in England. So when we have that illness, we go to the doctor sometime and he will give us some antibiotics. The antibiotics work by killing those nasty germs, viruses or the bacteria that is infecting us. And they make us well. They cure us, we say. My dear listeners and viewers, you know, there are also very serious illnesses of our heart and mind, psychological illnesses, illnesses inside us that are not amenable to antibiotics or any other kind of medicine. They need the medicine of the glorious Quran. And inshallah, I'll talk more about that when we talk about the Quran as a healing. But today, I've selected a passage from Surah Ali Imran. This passage is from verse 102 to 105. Very famous passage in Surah Ali Imran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min shaytanir rajeem. Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimoon. وَأَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَا حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ صدق الله مولانا العظيم In this short passage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is guiding us towards solidarity and unity. It's a very interesting concept, you know, unity and solidarity. Allah says, O believers, be mindful of Allah. Let me give you the translation first of this beautiful passage. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, O believers, be mindful of Allah and truly fear Him as He ought to be feared. And you should not die but in the state of submission to Him, but in the state of being a true Muslim. And then Allah says, Hold Allah's ropes firmly all together and let nothing divide you. Remember Allah's favors on you when you were enemies. So he joined your hearts in love and by his favor you became brothers. You were on the edge of a pit of fire. So he saved you from falling into it. In this way Allah explains for you his verses so that you may be rightly guided. Now, you know, here the passage begins with talking and addressing the true believers. You know, by saying, O oh, believers, be mindful of Allah. This word taqwa has, you know, according to Imam Fakhruddin Razi, has 12 different meanings. I'm not going to tell you all those 12 now, but inshallah, in this series of programs uh, on reflections on the gl glorious Quran, I will be, I'm sure, enumerating most of them. Here I've taken the meaning of Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah O believers, be mindful of Allah. Be attentive. 
Listen, very simply, you know, listen. Be conscious. SubhanAllah, you know, this is a very beautiful way of addressing us and making us conscious people. You know, people that are really successful in life are those who are conscious of their selves, their surroundings, their society, their country. You know, the best businesses and the best businessmen are who? Those who know what is happening in their own field of business. They know their competitors. They know what they are up to. What is the latest research? And only then do they succeed. You know, this consciousness, awareness is so important. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you know, there is so much to be conscious of all around you. When you are conscious of that, you will truly know me. You will truly believe in me. You know, I've just come back from uh, uh, climbing some mountains in Mallorca, and it was really fascinating. I like climbing mountains. I've climbed Kilimanjaro as well. I'm not bragging here. I, I, I just want to share this experience with you because, you know, um, it's really important that, you know, we immerse ourselves into the, into the, into nature actually, into natural surroundings. When we are in those natural surroundings, you know, we begin to f feel conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I certainly did, you know, we were on this four day tra trekking we did on those uh, mountains and it was just fascinating. We were surrounded by the most beautiful, scenic scenes all around us. Mountains, you know, that were, that gave us breathtaking scenes. Flora and fauna, that just made us wonder at the beauty of Allah's creation. The flowers, you know, the pink flowers, the purple, the yellow, and then, you know, streams flowing down the mountain and their whistling and their beautiful songs were just amazing. And then, of course, the chirping and the songs of the birds all around. Subhanallah, you know, no wonder. Once you are immersed in that kind of environment, how can you not have the conscious, conscience and consciousness, awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How can you not listen to the voice of Allah, eh? How can you not see the reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, sadly, we surround ourselves with worldly things. And when we are surrounded by worldly things, what happens? Well, we are sunk in the world. We are conscious of material things. We begin to worship material things. We become materialistic. That is what is madha prasti jaina. That is the worship of material things. Do you know how many things you possess? Research shows that in the West, people have about 10,000 possessions. I didn't believe that, actually. I thought <laughs> that's not quite true. But when I looked around in my own house, I had more than 5,000 books. Then when I opened some of my drawers, my goodness, you know, the little gadgets of all kind from, you know, sh pencil sharpeners, to, you know, mobiles and gadgets of all kinds, your CDs. Hauzubillah, you know, may Allah protect us from being, you know, people of material things. You know, just count the number of pairs of shoes you have. On an average, a Westerner has 22 pairs of shoes. Uh, our Muslim women nowadays perhaps have 100 pairs of shoes. Just pairs of shoes. How many pairs of you know, dresses they have, only Allah knows. No wonder, you know, we talk about, we can't feel Allah, we can't see Allah, we can't hear Allah. How's Billah? How can you feel Allah? How can you, when you are immersed completely in the world, you know, you are surrounded by material things. No wonder, Bal tu'thirun al hayat al dunya. You prefer the worldly life. You, live the, you love these luxuries of life. You can't feel Allah. Allah says, Ya yuhalladheena amanuttaqullah. O believers, be conscious of Allah. Be aware of Allah. Pay attention to Allah. That is what 
ittaqullah. That is what taqwa means. Allah says, have this consciousness of us as you ought to have, okay? Because that is the real, you know, beauty, the beauty of Allah. My theme today, I wanted to, you know, in, in light of this verse is, وَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ You know, Allah says, hold tightly, you know, grab hold of, you know, grip, grasp, make a firm hold. You know, when we hold a handle, for example, what do we do with the handle? We hold it firmly, and then we can turn the handle and open the door. وَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ Allah says, Hold firmly the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rope that will take you to paradise. It's very interesting. This is really a metaphor. Some of the great uh, mufassireen, the commentators of the Quran, people who have actually explained the Quran, say that, you know, the Hablullah is the glorious Quran. This, this Quran is the Hablullah, subhanallah. This is the rope. You know, what do we use the rope for? Well, giving, using that metaphor of the mountain again, you know, we use the ropes to climb, okay? The mountaineers use the rope to climb up, subhanAllah. And of course, it also has this idea of difficult, eh? You climb and climbing is difficult. This is the book, okay? This is the book, this is the rope that will help you to climb and get near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What a beautiful concept. But not, not by yourself alone, together, subhanallah. And here we have this concept that I, by myself, cannot get to Allah. I need my jama'a, I need my group, I need my masjid, I need my teachers, you know, I need my imam, I need my mulvisab. Yes, I'm not joking, you know. The, the meaning here is jami'an, all together. When you are associated with your masjid, you are part of your imam's group. That is the group you should be part of. Subhanallah, I want you to reflect on this. Allah says that hold tightly, you know, this book of Allah, together. Ya Allah, what do you mean together? Study it together. Learn it together, read it together, subhanallah. Now I hope you can understand. The Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in, the disciples of Muhammad, used to read the Quran together, you know. Rasulullah sallallahu used to teach them, subhanallah, what a great teacher. Eh? Mu'allim, mu'allim azam, the greatest teacher. And what a wonderful readers, disciples. And wonderful students were the disciples of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so here, you know, we are told here that we should read this together. We should learn it together. Okay? Jamiyan. Wala tafarraku. Now, I've, I've taken just one particular meaning of it. And that is with regards to the learning of the Quran. But of course, there are many other facets of that. Reading, studying, understanding the Quran, applying it in our lives. Together, you know, we need to apply this. In other words, we need to create a society together as Muslims. You know, by yourself, you know, you can be a, yes, you can be a good Muslim. But it is not easy. You know, it's very difficult. But when we are together, we can create that environment, you know, where the deen will be practiced. And this, is what, this was, of course, what people like Muhammad Ali Jannah, may Allah bless his soul, wanted. This is what Iqbal wanted for a country, a place, a land, where you could live by the Qur'an. And this is what they wanted in the form of Pakistan. Of course, Muslims living in the West, you know, we live, we're very, we live in a very peaceful, mature democracies. You know, we're very fortunate that we have the freedom of our religion here in Britain and other parts of the uh, of, of, of West. We're very fortunate that we can have our groups where we can create that spiritual environment that will really help us to practice the Qur'an. So Allah says that hold fast to, hold firmly the, to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together and do not be divided. And then Allah reminds us, Waskuru ni'matallah. 
and remember the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on you when you were enemies. Now, this is very interesting. You know, this is a reminder to the disciples uh, and, and, you know, the Aus and Hazraj, the two tribes in Medina who became Muslims. Now, these were two tribes that were enemies from a long time ago, okay? But when they became Muslims, they became like brothers and sisters. They became together. They became one community. They became one group under the leadership of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, you know, their old enmity, which had been going on for decades, you know, they've been fighting each other. But when they became Muslims, they became brothers and sisters. You know, we have that very famous treaty of Muwahhat, you know, where the Prophet made the, made the migrants from Mecca and the people of Medina brothers. But also brought the Ansar, you know, these are the helpers, the Muslims of Medina. He made them also come together. However, on one occasion, they were about to fight one another. They were about to, you know, have a brawl. You know, this was after a quarreling with one another. They were actually about to take up their arms against one another. The Aus and the Khazraj, the two tribes of Muslims in Medina. This verse was revealed in which Allah says to them, and the Rasul Sallallahu immediately rushed to the Aus and Khazraj and stopped them. He created the reconciliation and peace amongst them. And it was on this occasion that this verse was revealed. And Allah says, you know, remember, إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ Remember, when you were enemies of one and another, فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought you together. You know, he put ulfa in your hearts. It's a very beautiful word, ulfa. Ulfa means actually familiarity, love, kindness towards one another. فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ In your hearts he created ulfa. And then, فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانَا And by the gift of Allah, the grace of Allah, through the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you became like brothers and sisters to one another. Subhanallah. You know, this was how Allah brought the hearts together through the faith and through Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَعَلَّفَ بَيْنَ وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَىٰ شَفَىٰ حُفْرَةٍ مِّنَ النَّارِ Then the Quran says that, you know, you were on the brink, you were on the edge of a pit of fire. You know, a pit of fire, you know, a furnace, and you were on the edge of it, about to fall into this, into this furnace of fire, into this hell, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi فَأَنْقَزَكُمْ مِنْهَا He rescued you. SubhanAllah, what a beauty. He rescued you from this. And فَأَنْقَزَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ That is how Allah clarifies His signs for you so that you may be guided. So that you may be guided. And, you know, here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us how, you know, we need to be united. And it goes on actually to give us another means of uni unity. First way of unity, of course, is being God conscious, aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People who remember Allah, you know, who are paying attention. This is being conscious, the aware, you know, being conscious and a real, lively Muslim, okay, rather than somebody who is intoxicated with the world and just says things you know, with his tongue, but not with his heart. So that is not a true Muslim. You know, Muslim is truly the one who is conscious and aware. And then here, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then tells us that, you know, this can only, this unity can only come when you hold fast and you study and you believe and you go according to this wonderful book, the glorious Quran. Uh, and, you know, finally, you know, Allah reminds us that you know, it's this book that truly unites us. And this is the book that gives us, and, you know, through unity, we have strength. Our strength lies in following the Quran, in believing in the Quran, in acting on the Quran, in being aware of the message of the glorious Quran. Inshallah, we'll continue with this theme in our next 
episode. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahu ghafoor, Allahu raheem, Allahu yuhibbul muhsineen.